Welcome back to Unify Physics. Today we shall discuss a few more problems which have been asked for the previous next, uh, net JRF examinations all right, uh, from this module. Okay. This gives you an idea of what kind of problems are being asked for the examination. Okay. All right. Uh, the first problem is uh, about a system of springs. So this is the system. We have got a, con we have got a particle of mass m we have got a particle of mass m, mass m. It is attached to two springs, which are fixed at both ends. All right, which is attached to two identical springs. They have the same equilibrium length, and they have the same spring constant. Okay, the equilibrium configuration is the one where the springs are unstretched. There are no other external forces on the system. If the particle is given a small displacement along the x-axis, what's the equation of motion corresponding to? Uh, small oscillations. That's the question. So the idea is that you are giving a small displacement along the x direction. When we say small displacement, we say that x is less than l or x is much less than l. Okay, that's what we mean by small oscillations. So then what happens to the equation of motion? What's the equation of motion? Okay. So this may seem complicated at first sight, but if we just uh, do it step by step, it's quite easy. Right? So, we just need to know how to make this approximation of uh, small oscillation or small oscillation. All right? yeah. How do we make this approximation? We will see that. First, we have to start by writing down the Lagrangian L equal to T minus V. T obviously is simple. It is half m x dot square. Okay, no problem though. What about the potential energy? What about the potential energy? Okay. So, there are two contributions here. One is from this spring and one is from this spring. So, we can write it as V1 plus V2. Right? But by looking at this geometry, you see that it has to be exactly the same right? because it is exactly symmetric. The springs are identical and the particle of mass m is exactly at the same distance from this and this and this end. So, we can simply write it as 2V1. Okay, twice V1. So, if you, need, if you find the potential energy corresponding to one spring, you can get the other one also. Right? So, how do we find V1? How do we find V1? Okay. Usually, we know that the spring potential energy can be written as half k x square and what is this x? x is the displacement from the equilibrium position. x is the displacement from let us say equilibrium length. Equilibrium length. Okay. That means how much the string is stretched from the equilibrium configuration. The equilibrium configuration will take as the zero potential energy and ask how much the spring has been stretched from the equilibrium configuration. Okay. That will give you this x. Right? Now, how do we find here the, equilib the, the stretch or the displacement uh, from the equilibrium configuration? That is the question. So, here you see that this is L and obviously by using Pythagoras theorem, this is square root of L square plus because this make a right angle this makes a right angle triangle with l height and x is the base all right and this is the hypotenuse so this is just pythagoras theorem all right so what's the extension of the spring or displacement of the spring from the equilibrium position we can say displacement of spring of the spring from equilibrium position from the equilibrium position Okay. For that you find the final length, you take the final length, take the final length and subtract the initial length. Right? That will give you the, the stretch of the spring, okay? how much the spring has been stretched from the equilibrium position. All right? All right. Now, we can actually make the approximation here itself. We, can, we are talking about small oscillations. All right? We are talking about small oscillations. So, we can uh, simplify the square root. We pull L square outside of the square root. So, this becomes L 1 plus x square by L square or raised to 1 by 2 minus L. Okay? Because the oscillations are small, we can and x by L is very small then because we said that x is less than L. So, this is very small. We can make a binomial expansion of this and retain only the uh, first term, right? only the first term or the, or the first order term in this expansion. Right? So, this becomes L 1 plus x square by 2 L square right? because we are just making a binomial expansion and we know that 1 plus x all raised to n goes like 1 plus 1 plus n x plus etc. Right? We take only this term. So, that is why we have it here minus L. And what is this? This is equal to this L and L get cancelled. So, this becomes x square divided by 2 L. 
okay x square divided by 2n so this is the displacement of the spring from the equilibrium position if x is very small if x is very small okay we are talking about small oscillations okay. now we can find the potential energy okay v is equal to v1 right let's say v1 is equal to half k and what's the displacement of the spring from equilibrium position it's x square divided by 2l so we write that here x square divided by 2l square okay so that's equal to half k x raised to 4 by 4 l square okay x raised to 4 by 4 l square but we'll get exactly the same contribution corresponding to this spring also so total potential energy the total potential energy is simply v is equal to k x raised to 4 divided by 4 l square okay now what's the lagrangian lagrangian is t minus v and that's equal to half m x dot square minus k x raised to 4 divided by 4 l square all right now you just find the equation of motion dou l by dou x dot is m is m x dot okay and dou l by dou x is equal to minus you see you take derivative with respect to x this becomes 4 x cube and 4 and 4 get cancelled so it's minus k x cube divided by l square all right now the equation of motion simply becomes now equation of motion becomes uh, m x double dot okay dou l, d by dt of dou l by dou x dot minus dou l by dou x so that's minus k so that becomes a plus because there's a minus here okay plus k x cube divided by l square is equal to zero okay that's the equation of motion corresponding to small oscillations do we have that in the options yes it's this okay that's the answer so whenever you have a spring system of spring the important thing important thing to to calculate the the potential energy is to calculate how much the string has been stretched all right from its equilibrium position all right you have to be a bit careful in most problems okay so that's not a very difficult problem we've got uh, the equation of motion correctly okay it's mx double dot plus uh, kx cube by l square is equal to sorry it's not this it's option a mx double dot plus kx cube by l square is equal to zero okay so option a is the correct answer here we got x square okay so mx double dot plus kx cube by l square is equal to zero is the correct answer we can go to the next problem again not a difficult problem the lagrangian of a particle moving in uh, a plane is given in cartesian coordinates and the plane is given by in cartesian coordinates is this okay in polar coordinates the expression for the canonical momentum pr uh, conjugate to the radial coordinate r is okay we have to find the 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 what do you say the conjugate momentum corresponding to the coordinate r and what is it it has to be dou l by dou r dot that's a definition right that's a definition for conjugate momentum this is what we have to find okay so let's start by writing l this is x dot y dot minus uh, this is x square minus y square so this we can write as x square plus y square okay and uh, what are the coordinate system in polar coordinates all right in plane polar coordinates we know the plane polar coordinates we have got uh, this is uh, uh, this is theta and this is r okay and the transformation equations are quite simple x equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta okay we need x dot and y dot okay let's that let's find that right away x dot equal to r dot cos theta minus r sin theta theta dot you just use the product rule okay use the product rule and what's y dot y dot is equal to uh, r dot sin theta plus r dot sin theta plus uh, r cos theta theta dot okay and x square plus y square is simply r square all right r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta and what's x dot y dot x dot y dot is equal to because we need x dot y dot here all right so x dot y dot is equal to just multiply this okay so that becomes r dot square cos theta sin theta okay fine plus r r dot we just multiply these two okay r r dot theta dot cos square theta 
okay r r dot theta dot cos square theta okay now these terms minus r r dot sin square theta theta dot okay and then this so that is minus r square sin theta minus r square theta dot square sin theta cos theta okay all right is there any simplification here so we've got uh, r dot square cos theta sin theta r r dot theta dot cos square theta minus r r dot sin square theta theta dot okay we have got r r dot theta dot cos square theta and sin square theta there. we can simplify that okay so this is equal to uh, r dot square cos theta sin theta plus r r dot theta dot cos square theta minus sin square theta okay minus r dot r square theta dot square uh, sin theta cos theta okay now we can write the full Lagrangian full Lagrangian is r dot square cos theta sin theta okay r dot square cos theta sin theta all right uh, yeah let it be there plus r r dot theta dot cos square theta minus sin square theta is cos 2 theta okay cos 2 theta minus r square theta dot square sin theta cos theta sin theta cos theta all right now we take the derivative uh, I'm sorry, we have asked to find the, the conjugate momentum, all right? We have asked to find the conjugate momentum. We can maybe simplify it further, but that's not needed because we are asked only PR, okay? We'll see PR is equal to dou L by dou R dot, okay? PR is equal to dou L by dou R dot, all right? What's dou L by dou R dot? Here we have got 2 R dot cos theta sine theta, Okay, from here, you take the derivative with respect to r dot, and here we have got uh, r theta dot cos 2 theta, okay, plus r theta dot cos 2 theta. Is there any other term? No, there's no where else where r dot appears. Okay, now this 2 cos theta sine theta we can write as this is pr. Okay, now this 2 cos theta sine theta is sine 2 theta. So this is r dot sine 2 theta plus r theta dot cos 2 theta. Okay, uh -huh. so it's r dot sine 2 theta plus r theta dot cos 2 theta. That's PR. Okay, we have used the trigonometric identity that sine theta, 2 sine theta cos theta is sine 2 theta. Okay, do we have this answer? r dot uh, sin 2 theta plus r theta dot cos 2 theta. Yeah, we have got it here. r dot sin 2 theta plus r theta dot cos 2, cos 2 theta. Okay, that is the correct answer. All right. Okay. Now, here we are given a Lagrangian. In the third problem, we are given a Lagrangian. Okay. The Lagrangian is half mx dot square minus half kx square minus kx x dot t. Now, when you look at it at first, it doesn't seem like any Lagrangian we are familiar with. All right, we are familiar with quite a few Lagrangians. This does not seem familiar with uh, familiar. This does not seem familiar. This uh, we we have never seen this Lagrangian. Right? What system does it describe? Does it describe an untamped simple harmonic oscillator, a damped harmonic oscillator with time varying damping factor, an undamped harmonic oscillator with the time dependent frequency, or a free particle? All right. Now the best thing to do is to find the equations of motion and see what the equation of motion describes. All right. Let's find the equations of motion. Okay. So here we have got dou L by dou X dot is equal to M X dot, right? M X dot. And here there is also X dot. So that is minus K X T. Am I right? Yeah. Dou L by dou X dot is M X dot minus K X T. Okay. And uh, dou L by dou X, dou L by dou X is equal to, here we have got minus K X. Okay. And here also there's x dot, there's a x here, so minus k 
x dot t. All right. Now we find the equation of motion. Okay. So d by dt of dou l by dou x dot is equal to mx double dot minus kx dot t. Right mx double dot minus k x dot t. You just take the time dominating, all right. Uh, so there is one more term because you have to use the product rule. So it is minus k x dot t. There is one more t, one more term minus k x t. Am I right? You take this, use the product rule, use the product rule and this becomes uh, k x dot t. The weight of this becomes k x dot t uh, plus k x and the derivative of t with respect to t is 1, okay. So, you minus k x there, all right, there is no t. Okay, I hope that is clear. You take, when you take the time derivative, there are two terms. So, there is no t here, sorry, okay. Now, you write the, the, the equation of motion, you write the equation of motion d by dt of dou l by dou x dot is equal to dou l by dou x. Okay, so m x double dot minus k x dot t minus k x is equal to what is dou l by dou x? It is minus k x minus k x dot t. Okay, minus k x minus k x dot t. Okay, you see that these terms are exactly the same. You can cancel them off. Okay, you can subtract them and they become 0. So, you get m x double dot equal to 0. Now, you might be familiar with this equation. It is the equation of motion of a free particle. Right, because m x double dot is equal to 0, the force acting is 0, or x double dot is equal to 0, the, the, the acceleration is 0, which means the force acting is 0. This is just an equation of motion for a free particle. Free particle. Okay. So, we see that the given equation, the given Lagrangian actually describes a free particle. Okay. Now, that was not so difficult. Here comes the last question we are going to discuss in this session. The parabolic coordinates, uh, this is xi, Greek letter xi, okay, xi, parabolic coordinates uh, xi, comma eta are related to the Cartesian coordinates. This is a coordinate transformation. They have given a coordinate transformation here, okay. Uh, the Lagrangian of a two-dimensional simple harmonic oscillator of mass m and angular frequency omega, okay. We have to find the Lagrangian in the new coordinates, okay. Now, the only difficulty with this problem is that it is a bit difficult to write these Greek letters, all right, this xi and eta. Eta is fine, but this xi is a bit difficult. Well, that is the only difficulty. The rest is fairly straightforward, okay. So, do not get deceived by this uh, xi appearing here. That makes these Greek letters make things look more complicated than they actually are, okay. So, let us uh, do this step by step. So, what are the, the transformation equations? We have got x is equal to x equal to xi eta, x equal to xi eta, and y equal to y equal to half xi square minus eta square. Okay, xi square minus eta square. Right. So, we have got x equal to xi eta and y equal to half xi square minus eta square. And what is the system we are talking about? The Lagrangian of a two dimensional simple harmonic oscillator. Okay. So, for one dimensional simple harmonic oscillator, we know that for one dimensional simple harmonic oscillator, we know that the Lagrangian is uh, half m x dot square minus half k x square. Right? k is equal to m omega square, where k is equal to m omega square. Okay, two dimension also it's simple. It is in two dimensions. The simple harmonic, two dimension simple harmonic oscillator has the Lagrangian. It just has one more coordinate. Okay, half m x dot square plus y dot square minus half k x square plus y square. Okay, that's a two dimensional. Uh, simple harmonic oscillator. Okay, so it is isotropic. We will uh, say k is equal to m omega square. Okay, now the only thing is to substitute for x dot y dot x and y from this transformation equations and that will give you the answer. Okay, so let us do it uh, step by step. First, let us find x dot. We need x dot y dot. Okay, x dot you can use the product rule. This is psi dot eta plus psi eta dot. That is x dot. Okay. And uh, what is y dot? y dot is equal to, that is a bit more complicated, but half 2 
xi psi dot okay take the time derivative okay y dot minus 2 eta eta dot minus 2 eta eta dot so that's equal to xi psi dot minus eta eta dot okay so let's already find x dot square plus y dot square then we can simply substitute it here so x dot square plus y dot square is equal to that is xi dot square eta square plus xi square eta dot square plus 2 xi xi dot eta eta dot okay just squaring and squaring this gives plus xi square xi dot square plus eta square eta dot square minus 2 xi xi dot eta eta dot right so we see that these two terms get cancelled so we have got some simplification here this is equal to uh, can we pull anything outside we can take this uh, psi dot square outside yeah we can take psi dot square outside okay and that becomes uh, eta square plus psi square from here from here we can take this eta dot square outside eta dot square we can pull outside and that becomes psi square plus eta square okay there's a further simplification we can take this eta square plus uh, psi square outside all right so this becomes eta square plus psi square multiplied by uh, psi dot square plus eta dot square okay that's x dot square plus y dot square so the, the kinetic energy you can write as half m okay eta square plus psi square multiplied by psi dot square plus eta dot square right psi dot square plus eta dot square that's fine let's find the potential energy now it's simply uh, so first let's find x square plus y square okay we'll see if we can simplify x square plus y square this is our kinetic energy so in order to find the potential energy we do x square plus y square okay x square plus y square is here psi square eta square okay plus 1 by 4 psi square minus eta square whole square okay all right maybe we'll do it in the next uh, page okay so we'll take this uh, from here we got t is equal to half m sorry half m eta square plus psi square eta square plus psi square multiplied by eta dot square plus psi dot square okay that's our kinetic energy and we need to find x square plus y square that's equal to psi square eta square plus x i square eta square plus uh, 1 by 4 psi square minus eta square whole square let's simplify this now okay that's psi square eta square plus 1 by 4 psi raised to 4 plus eta raised to 4 minus 2 psi square eta square okay all right so we can further simplify that that is psi square eta square plus uh, psi raised to 4 by 4 plus eta raised to 4 by 4 minus uh, psi square eta square divided by 2 okay right this psi psi square eta square divided by 2 now this we can write as Oh, we didn't have to do all this i think maybe it was easier okay we could uh, just do it in one step let's not complicate things all right this we can simply write as this is easier okay this you can simply write as psi square eta square plus this one by four you can take inside so that becomes sky square by two minus eta square by two whole square okay all right yeah maybe we can expand it now psi square eta square plus sky raised to 4 by 4 plus eta raised to 4 by 4 minus 2 psi square eta square divided by 4 
right divided by 4 so this becomes 2 okay. so we've got x i square eta square here and psi square eta square by 2 over here this becomes psi raised to 4 by 4 plus eta raised to 4 by 4 plus psi square eta square divided by 2 okay just uh, do these things now that is equal to yeah that's enough i think we can write it like that for the time being okay now what's the lagrangian l equal to uh, we already have t t minus v okay so this is half m eta square plus psi square i'm just uh, writing this okay i'm just writing this uh, kinetic energy from here okay half m eta square psi square multiplied by eta dot square plus psi dot square okay minus v so we can write as half m omega square x square plus y square so half m omega square and we have got this term plus to 4 by 4 plus eta raised to 4 by 4 plus psi square eta square by 2 okay now to make it to match it with the options you can pull this half m outside okay you can pull this half m outside there's a further simplification you can pull this half m outside okay if you pull this half m outside it is eta square plus psi square multiplied by eta dot square plus psi dot square okay minus minus uh, omega square minus omega square uh, this i think we can write as uh, psi Okay, this term this this looks like a product right so you can write as psi by 2 uh, psi by 2 you can write as psi by 2 plus eta by 2 or sorry psi square by 2 plus eta square by 2 whole square okay that's just this is just an expansion of this okay now we simplify it a little bit more so this is equal to half m uh, now this says that we can pull also this eta square plus psi square outside okay we can pull this eta square plus psi square outside sorry okay so this is equal to half m eta square plus psi square multiplied by okay here we have got simply eta dot square plus psi dot square okay minus omega square okay we are pulled we have just pulled this psi square plus eta square outside okay so there is one still remaining there psi square plus eta square still remains there so that you can write as omega square divided by 4 psi, psi square plus eta square okay i think that's the final answer okay it's uh, half m eta square plus psi square multiplied by eta dot square plus psi dot square minus omega square by 4 uh, psi square plus eta square okay that's the final answer do we have this in the options yeah i think it's this all right yeah it's this okay option b is the correct answer half m psi square plus uh, eta square multiplied by psi dot square plus eta dot square minus omega square by 4 psi square plus eta square okay this is not very difficult it's just a simplification right it's just a matter of simplification as i said earlier the only complication here is writing this psi over and over again it uh, it uh, seems it it uh, makes it look more complicated than actually it actually is okay this is uh, easy all right so i think we'll uh, wind up for today we have done four problems uh, i hope things are clear if you have any doubt uh, please don't hesitate to contact us okay uh, thank you for now uh, see you in the next class